Are you ready to become a Pokemon master with the power of machine learning? In this little two-part machine learning tutorial, we'll be using Python and the PyTorch library to build a binary classification model that can determine whether a Pokemon is legendary or not. But we won't be just reading out the code. We'll be discussing the thought process behind each decision so that you can understand the logic behind building a successful machine learning model. So join us on this exciting adventure as we explore the world of Pokemon and machine learning. Okay, the first episode is all about data. I know we want to get to the final machine learning model itself and have it predict some cool stuff, but dealing with this data is really important. So first let's import the libraries that we need for manipulating our data and analyzing it. And also the libraries that we will be using for this tiny bit of pre-processing that we need and to actually build the data set. So let's get to it. Okay, so those are quickly the imports. You know, we're importing pandas to deal with the data sets and Seaborn to do some tiny bit of visualization. And then we'll be using scikit-learn to simply do the test and train split. We'll get to that in a second. Then we have some pre-processing. Also, we'll get to that. And finally, in the end of this video, we'll actually build the data set using the uh, PyTorch API. So the first thing that we need to do is of course, get the actual data. And I will leave the links in the comments below where I actually got the data from. It's from Kaggle, it's a simple data set. And let's quickly just read the CSV from the data folder that I have in this project. And let's just have a look at how the data looks. Okay, easy as that. So we're just reading the CSV and we can look at the shape. So we see that we have 801 samples. We have 801 Pokemon. And those Pokemon have 41 features, 41 columns. And here we can see how this data frame would look like. So again, one row is one Pokemon. And we see that we have several columns. Some are of a categorical value or some object value, right? Like the abilities that they have or the um, attacks. And then we have some scores of how efficient or how effective this Pokemon is against, against certain other types of Pokemon. And if we scroll ahead, we have further nice little um, features, but we also have like strings, again, object type features, object type columns that indicate the type of the Pokemon. And we, in the end, we have our is legendary column, which is the uh, label that we want to predict, right? Zero or one. Now, there are several things that we can notice here in this data set. And that is, first of all, that we have object types. And those are categorical types, and those are kind of annoying to deal with. You would have to ideally encode them into something like a one-hot encoding vector. And that's one thing that's, that has to be taken into account. Now, the other thing is that we, of course, also have missing values. And those missing values are also a problem. Now, to be really good in what you're doing as a data scientist, you would ideally want to impute the values properly. There are different methods of imputing data. For example, the mean imputation method where you just fill in this missing value with the most likely um, value of this one column. But in or there are also um, more sophisticated imputation methods like the k-means imputation. You should look that up if you're interested. But in our specific case, we can also use our prior knowledge to determine that one missing value of type 2 probably means that this Pokemon is simply only a fire type Pokemon, right? So it would make sense to have fire of type 1 and in type 2 also type fire um, for this specific case. So th let's think about what we want to do. The first thing that I would do is look at the class label distribution. How many legendary Pokemon do we have and how many non-legendary Pokemon do we have? For that, we'll just simply use a Seaborn uh, count plot. Okay, and the first thing that we can instantly see is that we have very little legendary Pokemon, which obviously also makes sense. So it's a very imbalanced data set. So this will be tricky to deal with. There will be several things that we can do, tricks that we can apply when dealing with the data itself, but also later when um, designing the new network architecture. But this will be an issue. So let's first of all clean our little data set, right? We've already discussed what the points are that we need to address, right? So those little categorical values 
and the missing values. And let's first let's let's first get to that. Let's implement that quickly. Okay. So now, as mentioned, we have quickly just went, went ahead and used a nice little data frame, uh, pandas methods to just exclude every column that is of type object, which just means that if we look at the data frame now, the clean data frame, we only have numerical values, which is exactly what we wanted. And we've also went ahead and also dropped all the missing values or all the rows of missing values. And the data frame itself looks nice, but this absolutely doesn't look nice. We have dropped a lot of call uh, of a lot of Pokemon, and that is really a big issue. And this doesn't look good at all. We we pretty much not only dropped if quite a few rows, but quite a few Pokemon, but also almost every Pokemon that we dropped was a legendary Pokemon, and that's really awful. So. This something we're missing something, and we have to look at the data a bit more uh, precisely and do some more decisions, some better decisions when dropping some columns or cl uh, just cleaning the data set. And I've already went ahead and done so. And that said, I will just give you the solution that I found. And the thing is um, that when you look at this percentage male column quite often it will have a missing value for the legendary Pokemons. I, first of all, I already also don't quite know what this means intuitively, right? Um, but that's not the point. So what I just went ahead and did is I first dropped this column because, you know, we have 41 columns, right? Including the, the label column, so one or two less. That will be more than enough for a simple binary classification task. So I will go ahead and just drop this column so that we don't have any missing values in this column for the legendary Pokemon, which leads to this awful distribution. Um, and we'll also just remove this Pokedex number because that also doesn't make any sense because it's just um, always unique values for each Pokemon and the model will not be able to learn any specific pattern from that. So let's just drop those two columns before we drop the missing values and let's then again look at our data set. Okay, so we now went ahead and dropped those two columns. And the first thing that we can see is that we now have a lot more data points, or a lot more Pokemon, a lot more samples. We now only dropped like 20 Pokemon, right? We before had 801. Whoops. <clears throat> and now we have, again, dropped a few columns, but again, we have 32 or like 31 feature columns. And that's more than enough to actually do some binary classification. So now that was way too much talking about this dataset cleaning process, but it's really important to think about how to approach this. So now let's quickly go ahead and actually split the data into the inputs and the labels, and then split the data into the training and test set. And we'll talk again a bit more about the, this last part in a second, but let me quickly just implement that. So now we have simply split the data into our input and our output, into our labels, right? We just took the data set, we'll take every sample that we have, and we'll take all columns up to the final column, excluding the final column, which is just our um, is legendary column, right? And we'll just take this final column and use it as our label, as simple as that. Then we'll be splitting our data set into a, into a training set and a testing set. This is very important because in machine learning you have this notion of overfitting and by training on a training set you can overfit the data, that means you can perfectly predict this data, but later on samples that you have never seen before, in this case the test set, you will perform very poorly. And therefore you would, you would in most cases or pretty much always want to have a training set and a testing set. So, to split this data set into train and test set, we have this nice little train test split function by scikit-learn and the syntax is very simple. We provide the input data and the output data, then we specify uh, how, we want, how much we want to split the data. In this case, we want to use, our, use two thirds of the data for our training set and one third of our data for our testing set. Then we provide some random state for reproducibility 
And then we have this final thing called Stratify. And we'll talk a bit about what Stratify does now. First of all, what we can see is that we have a nice little split here. We have two, 523 samples for our training set and we have 258 samples for our testing set. But the important thing to see is this mean value, right? We have zeros and ones in our data set and we can see that our mean is shifted a lot towards zero. That means that we have a lot more zeros, a lot more non-legendary Pokemon in our data set than legendary Pokemon, which obviously makes sense. And this distribution appro approximately matches the same distribution that we had before here, right? Okay, let's quickly do this again to have here. Uh, we can see that this approximately, you know, 10% would be legendary and 90% would be uh, non-legendary. Let's approximate it. And what this stratify parameter does is that it tries to force the split to have the same distribution, right? That our training set also has a split of 90% non-legendary and 10% legendary and our test set as well. If you would not use this stratify parameter, then it will be simply a random split. That means what can happen is that our test set ha by chance happens to get all the legendary Pokemon and our training set has no legendary Pokemon from which to learn from. And that obviously is not ideal. So we can actually see what the effects of this parameter by just rerunning this cell without the stratified parameter. And we can instantly see that the mean has shifted again more towards the zero. So there are more non-legendary non Pokemon in the training set and we have more legendary Pokemon in the test set. And this simply is not, not something that we would desire. So therefore, again, a, a nice little trick to use um, for unbalanced datasets is this stratify parameter. So we'll just go ahead and use the stratify parameter and go ahead and now get to the pre-processing, to further pre-processing of the data. Let me first write out the code and we'll then talk a bit about it, okay? Okay, I've quickly converted the data frames to NumPy arrays to have it in a proper format that we can use to build the dataset and then later train the model. And I wanted quickly to first look at how one sample of this data set would look like, of our training data set, right? We look at the first sample and we can see this is our input array, just a vector of, of integers, all the integers of our one data frame and the corresponding label. So that's all nice and good. But again, a trick that we can use to to uh, combat this imbalanced data set is to pre-process the data by standardizing the data. What does standardizing the data mean? It means that we take our nice little data cloud and center it around zero in this coordinate system that we have. And you might think that that changes nothing, but it, there is actually mathematical proof and real a lot of theory that, that's, that proves that this does improve the performance. And Therefore, we'll be using, again, scikit-learn, the standard scalar function, and I'll quickly implement that and then we'll talk a bit more about it. Okay, you see that I'm using GitHub Copilot a lot and honestly, it's just a game changer. I really recommend using it. Small little tangent, but so, um, <laughs> what we have now done is we have defined a standard scalar and we then fit the scalar and then we transform the train set and the test set. What does, again, what does this scalar do? It centers the data around the zero point of the coordinate system, around the center of the coordinate system, by subtracting the mean of this data set, and also it scales the data by dividing through the standard deviation. And we can also see that this is what it does by looking at the little documentation. Um, you see, u is the mean, or mu in this case, and it divides by the standard deviation. And what this does, if we again look at our samples, how they now look, is it changes the input. So this is something that is very useful to improve the performance of a model, even before actually implementing the neural network. So there are multiple points at which you can apply tricks to get a better performance. Okay, we are almost done for this video. Let me just quickly finish off this video by rounding it up by actually implementing the dataset class using the PyTorch API that we will be then using to actually train our neural network. I'll see you in a second. Okay, I went ahead and finished this boilerplate code, nothing fancy. 
Um, and I also forgot to impose torch, but that's no big deal. So what did we do here? We defined two data sets, right? One for training and one for testing. And again, it's really nothing special. This is the, the straightforward um, boilerplate code that you need for a dataset class. We have to implement three functions, the init, the get item, and the length function. Init just stores the dataset that we provide. And then the get item supplies, when called, the training, the input data, and the output data, right? Given a index. This index can be one single value, but it can also be a slicing operation, right? We can, we can provide the one training sample with the corresponding label for index seven, but we can also provide the slice of the training data with the corresponding inputs of slice seven to 21. And we'll see what that means in the second episode. The third function that we need to implement is just the length of the whole dataset, not the not the length of one sample, right? But the length of the whole dataset, how many samples we have. Then we just store this dataset in a variable by providing our X train and Y train that we have extracted and standardized before. And we do the same for our test dataset, but here we only need the inputs because we will only do inference on those inputs and the evaluation on the test set will be a tiny bit different. So we only need for this data loader to provide the input samples. So if you're curious what that means, stay tuned for the next episode. So what have we done so far? I mean, we it doesn't look like much, but there's a lot of thought that went behind into this whole process. What columns we need? How do we deal with certain types of columns? Um, how do we improve the performance of the model on a data set level, on a pre-processing level. And we have done quite a bit of work and I hope that there was a lot that you could learn. Okay, as mentioned in this video, we cleaned and pre-processed our data to get it ready for training. And in the next video, we will use this data set to build and evaluate a neural network model that can classify whether a Pokemon is legendary or not. So join us as we continue our journey of becoming Pokemon masters with the power of machine learning. If you have enjoyed this video and learned something new, please don't forget to like. And of course, as mentioned, if you don't want to miss the next episode and future similar videos, don't forget to subscribe. And with that said, as always, thank you very, very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!